Hello guys, I'm your host Utkarsh and this video is about processing the wide field astrophotography data It was shot by Matt Dyrich I think last year he released this data set and I tried processing this using the Photoshop Back then I did not have Pixinsight and I use a very different approach to process that image but right now I have switched to both using Pixinsight and Photoshop for making my images better so this data belongs to Matt and I would like to give him a big shout out about this and we could simply just look at this wonderful nice data shot under good dark skies using Nikon Z6 I don't think I remember if it was modified or not and so you could see that really have some decent amount of stars in the image and there are very very slight trailing issues this was shot with 50mm lens so our first step would be using the deconvolution method that is generally used by astrophotographers to make your stars better in the image so I'm just starting off by making a copy of this image and just clipping this I already have a star mask prepared uh, but you could prepare that easily using the star mask here by just lowering the smoothness to around 5 large scale structure to 3 or 4 and scale to 5 or 6 and just by increasing shadows a bit you could just simply drag this on top of this image and you would get a really nice star mask so I'll just close it here and the next step is actually choosing and acquiring the dynamic PSF so my approach would be just to select maximum amount of stars here I really do not want to I mean it's always recommended to select the Moffat stars but I'm just going for the Gaussians one too quickly select a few of them just to show there's a very slight change in the image only to the stars this is why we run the convolution just going to select a good number of stars does not matter here it's Gaussian or Mufat right now but I would when when you guys are processing just look for stars that are Mufat so you have good proper selection I'm just trying to explain you so we have majority of the stars here are Gaussian and only few of them are Mufat so I'll just quickly remove that and our PSF is now done so I'll just open the convolution here and select my local support star mask here then I'll select the PSF and my length would be the same right to 
increase the shape slightly check it increase the number of iterations and I'll just drag and drop this and just wait for the results so this process is actually quite tricky and sometimes it takes a few number of steps to actually make it work so I'm just recommending it to I mean not just wait for only one step I mean you could take several several attempts in doing the convolution and when you find that this is actually the best one that you got then only you should just you should close all the other remaining ones so i think i'm just showing you the first one here and this will be large because this is barely a 50 mm lens i, I don't think so we can recover a really really large I mean, amount of data that has been lost due to the atmospheric turbulence. I think deconvolution really helps under city skies or even under dark, dark skies, I mean, especially with the stars. So, it's definitely mend it. So, sometimes if our mask and is not properly done. I think I probably forget. Did I forget to use the mask here? I have to see to check if I need to apply the clipped image on top of this original one. So let me see just after finishing this. So we have to wait for more seconds, I think, and it might work. Okay, I did not use that mask and you could see that how deconvolution has affected our background too. So now I'll just quickly go back and just use this mask and I'll try to just drag this over the top and let I see the results that we get here as told before this is a very tricky process and it requires quite number of attempts to master this so guys it's always recommended to try it at least few times so our deconvolution is done and you could see that I think there isn't a very big change but on the brighter stars, you could see some change. They are more tighter now. So I think did get, I mean, well. So now we may begin processing image. So now I'll just close the the conversion here I'll just rename this as star mask and I think probably this one requires dynamic background extraction here so I'll just open and start placing generating some points here I'll just set the radius to 90 and I'll keep this minimum sample weight to 0 0.10 and set the tolerance to around 2 and press generate here so this way generate the image and I'll try to keep this away from the main nebulous region here and 
set correction to subtraction press execute so the image looks a bit more balanced here compared to that just a slightly bit more balanced so now we have done the TV here, uh, I think I set the identifier of this image to star mask. Sorry, so I need to set of this one. One, okay, so I just this one is. one was clone I think yes and this one was okay, so now we'll go to photometric color calibration and set the white reference to G25 star here as we want the image to be completely balanced in terms of color so now what would be the RA tech here so I'm just assuming as the M78 this reflection nebula here is absolutely at the dead center center of the image so we'll just go and search coordinates and feed m78 and set on get in now i'll enter focal length 50.0 and exercise to 5.92 then i'll try to Increase the magnitude to around 15 or 16 and just drag this here. So let me just see how it might work with this. PCC might take a bit time in making this image work. So I'm just pausing the video. So guys, now you could see the photometric calibration has finished working out and it has color calibrated our image, but still the green stuff is not gone. So I'll try to use the SCNR tool to remove the, the green tint that is visible in our image here. And now I'll just simply save this image as RGB PCC Orion and now just close the all other options here. Now my first step would be obviously using some sort of stretch to lift this image here so I'll just simply use the arc sign stretch to make my first stretch for this wonderful data here so I do not want to just do a really big stretch here I want to avoid that but I want it to be like nice and even I think this much seems good and I do not want to exceed more than that so now I will open pixel math and start writing here as dollar t and then 
I would click on create new image as A. This will be our original image. And next will be the image B. And the image B is what we will be working on mostly. So I just keep the A here and just move the RGB TV from the view. So we already have a mask prepared here and I'll just simply drag this here and now I'll just go to all process and use the multi-scale median transform. Then I'll just cancel the first four layers and just drag this so this will remove reduce or maybe you could say de-intensify the stars in our field of view so this works pretty well with the MMT if you make a good mask and your image is filled with good amount of data stars would gone and the details that would be visible would be I mean really good it's like quick star removal so you can see here how the MT worked right now and now I'll try it once again just a little bit after that I'll try the morphological transformation tool to make sure that we have maximum star removal throughout the field of view. Do not want the nebula to be affected by our star reduction. So we made star mass this is why but I think still due to star reduction there are some amount of artifacts that are generated while doing so so now we have used the MMT here then I'll just open the morphological transformation here I'll reduce the amount to 0.78 and use the circular structure here and just drag this here Now, maybe I'll just go back and try increase the iteration here to 3. Let me just see the results here. Okay, did a pretty good job, I think. So now, I'll just close every other thing here and I'll just go to pixel math and start writing an expression 1 minus bracket 1 minus dollar t multiplied by bracket 1 minus dollar t so this will actually post the you could say it's, it works like a screen mask inward and I'll just simply drag this image here and see how brightness okay I already have a star mask here need to just remove that and I'll just drag this here quickly see the details of our image are now visual and this could be adjusted slightly using the histogram transformation tool here so I'll just use the adjustments here 
to set our lab point and now I think it's good enough so it's, I mean it's nicely a stretched image and now we are going to blend this into this image I mean this into this so we are just going to modify this expression a little bit so f is equal to 0 0.5 bracket 1 minus 1 dollar t multiplied by 1 here it will be b and then we'll just multiply that by f bracket plus dollar t multiplied and f you have to set the symbol to f2 and I'll just try to see if it works so I'll just quickly drag this on top of my okay it did top of my a data here so you could see the change here our details from the starless has been merged with our image with the stars here so I'll just show you once I'll just go back here and you can see how we have some good amount of change in our image and I'll just try to set the Instagram slightly and maybe try a bit more adjustments like slightly more and I think that's it I think we have done good amount of adjustments using this technique here and you can see that the whole nebulous region is visible so I'll just try to use the histogram transformation again and I'll set the black points carefully and now I'll just save this image as A now what else we could try is maybe slightly assisted color calibration here by increasing slight blues in our data okay and this seems to be fine the next could be I mean I'll just hop into Photoshop I'll just overwrite this file a 16 bit and maybe try some adjustments there you could do some more adjustments but I'm just trying to do it here I mean look at this beautiful region here so so nice just great data by Matt I mean really nice so I'll try to make some color adjustments so for color adjustments I just go to image mode and I change it to lab color here then I'll go to these channels here channel A channel B and then I'll click on this icon here and go to adjustments and curves now I'll place some point here set the values to zero and lift these 
colors from here. See the blues that are being highlighted here easily. I'll try a very very minute adjustments because this process actually makes our image very very saturated so I have to be very careful while using this so now I did it once again and let me just check my L here levels try to do it slightly just slight adjustments and now I'll try to make a duplicate copy of this image and go to filter noise dust and scratches try to just increase the into 0.5 and then go to my original image and click on apply select a copy and click on screen mask and invert now see that the opacity is actually too much so we'll just lower this to around 20 30 or maybe 40 percent so this was you got in one step in photoshop and there you had to do it quite a number of times in pixel site so you might get a little more flexibility in pixel side uh, by using the screen mask inward but in photoshop you could do it simply by just using applying the noise reduction to your image and then simply adding the original into your starless image so now I just set this image to this much and you can see the beauty of this image here see how beautiful this is coming out just look at this wonderful region there are stars everywhere I just do not like producing stars too much I mean there are a number of people who just produce way way too much number of stars just to reveal structures but there should be a balance between removing the stars your image and showing details I mean there are some people who just, who just just totally reduce the noise of the image. That's not the point, man. You do it, but it does not look very good. Here. I'm trying to adjust some colors of my image here. I think this one is classic reds. So I'm trying to get that color only. We could use, I mean, reduce noise here, or maybe try some star reduction. So for the noise, I'm just use the image nomic noise reduction tool. This is a very good one for Photoshop users and try to reduce the noise to around 40% and you can just simply just look at here how wonderful this produces wonderfully this reduces I mean you don't need to make any more adjustments other than that or however you could use I mean a mask or anything but I do not generally use that so see the details that have came out now I'm trying to use the shadows here to get some colors on our image here so this is the dialog box of the shadow shadows and highlights so I'm just going to select 
amount to 50 50 and if you, you do this corrections here you can see the boost in saturation but we are not going to just overly saturate this we'll also try to decrease the mid-tone contrast and I'll press ok here there's also some sort of bluish thing visible here in the middle of the image so I'm gonna try to use the lasso tool here and try to see if that thing is repairable maybe just using the color balance tool Okay, I think it did need a slight change, it did need a good amount of change, not a slight one. So, you could see the wedge head here and the Orion here, you could easily see. Now I'm just saving the file to A, just to make sure we are just saved up A, B, S. Now, further adjustments that could be done is adding some stars using Star Spikes Pro. I mean, you're adding life to the stars here. So I'm just raising the sharpness here. I'll just go to Advanced. Okay, I think I have a selection here, so I need to first deselect this. Go to Pro Digital Software. Okay. So I just decrease the quantity here, and image is still loading. And now I'll just go to advanced and simply just okay. I think the file is probably too big. Yeah, I think I found a sweet spot here. Now I need to try to lift Might notice that here the Ryan is also trying to be a hero here <laughs> So I'll just adjust that later on easily by the razor tool let's increase saturation here let's increase the Quantity two. And now I'll press OK. So this one definitely added some vibe to our image here. And I'll just use the eraser here. Remove that blow from our image and I'll just flatten this up. Now you could try some more stuff here. 
just paste this so I'll just make mask here and try to boost the saturation of this particular region now mask is ready so I need to invert it first so only this selection is applied and then need to I think this okay. so now I need to just feather this up I think this much seems fine and now I use the curves here and create a flipping mask first of all I'll just increase the reds here see how adjustments are made you could also try the I think this much should be good. Wait a second, I need to just go back to maybe just open my actions and history. So I need to make it here. And then I'll invert this. Control plus I. And then feather this up. Now need to make some adjustments using the curves select the channel to red create a clipping mask the clipping mask will ensure that only this particular adjustment is only applied so you can see that how adjustments are only applied to this particular region that we are interested so you could also use the vibrance here but this is applying the whole image so again we might create a clip mask and then probably I need to just try to use median filter here and see if we are making any change in this particular field just press ok So I think it applied to whole image. So I'm just going to simply use the Gaussian blur slightly on this mask just to make sure it's more better. And then I'll try to again, I mean, make some adjustments using color balance. I just create a keeping mask here. Okay, it's already.
Okay, so I think this much seems good. So I'll just simply add in this image here and this image is already so good. Maybe we could try slight bit more adjustments. I actually make two copies of this image, changing the first to soft light and changing the second to color, merging both down and you could get a really nice boost in the colors here. So I don't want so much to be tan that I think around 54% seems nice. Now I'll go to selective colors and try to need some more adjustments here. This seems fine. We could also adjust some blue tones in our image. I think this one seems to be fine. Just need to make some selection here and apply a good amount of color to these regions and just slightly enhancing this. So I'm just going to use very very slight adjustments of dust and scratches here. I hope this is Okay, it might make a lot impact, so I'm just going to use the image dynamic noise reduction tool. The reason why I'm using this noise reduction is we want to add a slight bit of structure to our image here. Just a slight bit of structure. As Bernard's who is looking very fine here. Looks really good. So now you can see the details here are absolutely nice. Maybe I could try some actions of make star smaller by astronomy tools. So I just use this and try to make some adjustments of the stars. They did a good job, but I think that was just way too much. So I might just, you could see, I think I could just use a razor tool here and I'll just try to use a razor here carefully. I want only areas that I'm interested in see from here how the reduction was done and I want this reasons see here We do not want these stars to be affected, so I'm just making sure that stars remain intact here. These are the careful adjustments that we need to focus, and this is why it's important to make every 
step I mean carefully very very carefully we do not want to hurry up some people just they make I mean rogue adjustments I mean I have done too I and mean, it's common but you need to learn from those mistakes I and mean, I've learned a lot of things in my past regarding how I've made bad images but I've learned it I mean do not make the same mistakes again so just try to take critiques maybe see from the people who are more experienced and try to implement that as quickly as possible because the human brains forgets things very quickly so now you could see they have made quite an adjustments here and there is still some there is still some issue at the center so I might try to just use this blaster tool here and slightly bump up the levels of this region just slightly and this mix seems to be fine and I think and this one seems to be good they've made some good adjustments here they could try something else too like again again going that just a scratches way around five then I'll try to sharpen this image up a little just go to apply image APS copy mask and invert is already set so this time I might not add too much maybe 20% let's see 100% how does it look yeah, yeah. looks I mean too too bright I mean so I'll try Maybe a 30 percentage that seems a lot lot better so now our stars are far far better here and I'll once again go to pro digital software try to make some more color adjustments star adjustments so the image is loading up here and this is basically the final adjustments for this image i know there are a lot of still i mean there are a lot of more things that i could have discussed and but i won't be discussing that in this video and guys this is how i actually make i mean process the images here so I usually use different kind of methods to perform such operations in our image you could easily I mean understand by this method how easily you could I mean make some good adjustments to your image just I'll try to increase that slightly so I'll just press open okay I think there is not enough RAM so I need to first so I had to close this image here because I think 
more number of images might be affecting my Photoshop. So I think I have to close. And I still have a 16 GB RAM in this laptop. Still, I think my machine is getting old. I think maybe definitely it's an upgrade. So I'll just simply apply Star Spikes Pro here. And after that, let's say that the Orangula is also affected. So I'll just simply use the eraser, eraser tool here and make it go away. So just wait for a moment here. And I just copy the image using Control plus A, Control plus C, and use eraser. Just remove the other thing here. Try to remove the glow from this, and just simply flatten the image. You could also use some slight curves adjustments, maybe. I think it might be a bit too much. So I think this is it here. And I think we have done a good job in processing this data. And let's just compare the results here from this to this if you follow these simple steps you could easily create process such result you only need to be just very very careful while making steps i mean do not make mistakes or overdo things keep things simple in your image i mean this was really nice data by matt huge thank you to you last year i processed that with completely different approach and this year i used a different technique in front of you so guys you could also use this technique in the Pixel site plus Photoshop. This is how I actually teach my eight members who have subscribed to my tutorials. So if you are willing to subscribe, it would be absolutely great because I regularly post such kind of content where such data is I mean it's a kind of data is being used to demonstrate how image processing can be done effectively to your image so this was actually from the bottle of one skies i think so it should contain a good amount of details here as you see so there are a lot of number of ways you could take your approach to processing for example i showed you the technique in pixel site using pixel map you could have simply used that in Photoshop, but the point is you need to do it very, very systematic way. And if you do it in a systematic way, your image might turn out nice. Now, some people might find the image, I mean, bit close to saturated, but it's totally depends upon taste of person to person, and. You don't need to worry if you have saturated your image, just try to improve every time, I mean, just get a sweet spot, I mean, where it does not appear to be totally like this on the left, and you do not want it to be like completely bleeding the colors, I mean, with the addition of stars here, it looks probably nice. There is also, I want to recommend you something that do not reduce too much stars in your image. It does not look very, very well. Stars should be present in your image. It adds some good, good, important 
aspect in your image data and this is why stars are present otherwise your images look way too ugly now some people what they do is just I'm not just I'm not really mocking people but what I am telling you they just they just do this I mean I mean even I could do this but you need to make that balance I mean your your image should be balanced up the background should not be like blown up or it should be completely noisy or if you want you could smoothen the image I mean if I if I wanted I would have used a exponential transformation here and just simply post this up and smoothen it but that doesn't look very very nice you need to do a nice even balanced image this is why it is very important to do it, it in a very systematic way and this I do not want to be like telling you any further long about this as we have already crossed more than 50 minutes and you could just simply use such techniques to enhance your astronomical data so guys I think this is it and I hope you enjoyed my video please share subscribe to my channel and if you like the video do press like and if you want you could consider purchasing my tutorials and this I've given a link to my website you could completely buy the package it contains intermediate amount of processing videos at a very affordable rates so it's actually more mix of Photoshop and Pixinsight so I have already demonstrated you how you could use your wonderful data to pull out some good amount of data so guys this is it speaking for the last time thank you guys clear skies